Hello and welcome back and today I want to show you how to make your Synology NAS internet accessible because so many of you out there are on the verge of going for a cloud service and as you can see on the screen I do actually have upcoming videos featuring all of these cloud providers and how they compare with a NAS but so many of you don't seem to realize that when you buy a NAS not only do you have network access that is to say access to the NAS within your home or office but also a NAS can be accessed via the internet exactly the same as the likes of Google Drive, Dropbox and more. So what I want to show you today with a Synology is how to make your Synology accessible over the internet. So first things first you've got to log into your Synology and again you can check out my video on how to set up a Synology and you'll get to the uh, user interface. This is the main desktop where I'm using a local NAS as you can see from that IP at the top left. You make your way in go to the control panel and then head over to quick connect. Now this one I've already registered in advance but I've removed my registration to create a new account. So the first thing you need to do is click on quick connect. This is the system whereby you can access your Synology NAS over the internet anywhere in the world and click to log in or register a Synology account. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna create a brand new Synology account. First things first, it's going to ask you, and as you can see, now we're connected to Synology's own website. We're not using our IP anymore. And it asks you what kind of user you are. So for the case of argument here, we're going to say I'm a home user. So we're clicking on home user. Next, I'm based in Europe. So I'm going to say I'm based in Europe. You have to agree to the terms and conditions, which I encourage you to read through, of course. And you have to fill out the details. So for now, let's just go with me. Uh, we're going to use another email. So I've already registered this bad boy here. So why don't we go for info at .com. and again if you've got any queries find me an email to that email address right there. Uh, next we have to put a password in again this is going to have to be one that's ridiculously complicated and obviously I'm not going to read out on the screen what that password was. Next we're going to proceed onwards and apparently it's not good enough. Would you Adam and Eve it? Finally got that password done. Next, it encourages you to add uh, contact information that can be used. Uh, for now, I'm not going to enter any of that, but it does let you uh, ins insert more information about you and your user account. Next, you can say if you want to receive information from Synology. So again, if you want to remove it or you want to hear from them on these subjects, they can add you to mailing list, that sort of thing. Uh, and again, always make sure you're a human being. Click there. And now it will ask me to check in the background about my email account, which I'll do off camera. Okay, so we've activated that email account, and so now let's make our way into this device. Let's have a cheeky look here. And we'll log into our account. And here we are, and it's just going to let us know what exactly the services and support are of our Synology now. So once again, we have activated this now. And there's the name, Robbie Info NAS Compares. So from here, we make our way back to the Synology, and now we log in with the account that we've created with Synology NAS. And there you go. Now they're, co they're connected together, they're synchronized, and now we have internet-based access to our Synology NAS. It takes care of all the stuff to do with DDNS, and you can even completely change the amount of access and kinds of access to your data. So for now, if we refresh that page there, refresh that, and there we have it. There is our internet-based access to our Synology NAS. And again, 1618 plus, there's the serial number for you guys there. Don't worry, this is a sample unit, so there's nothing you can do with it. And there's our 1618 here, just to make it abundantly clear to you. Let's just go for it. Where's our hardware, our information, info center? As you can see, there's our serial. And there's our serial, it's the same unit. To get access to our Synology NAS, we just click that quick connect ID. But again, it is worth mentioning that when you have access, this URL at the top there that just went away, that's the one you want to save. So from here, now we have internet-based access to our Synology NAS. Now at the moment, it's switching us to our localized IP, but it's during that connection process that we can now access our NAS over the internet. And of course, unlike, let's get them open up, Dropbox, Google Drive, Amazon Drive perhaps, with these guys, you have file level access, as you can see. And there's things you can do, you can share files, or we're gonna do a whole comparison selection of videos 
comparing these third party clouds with the NAS. And again, Google Drive, you've got some to spare. I think I'm using five or 10 gig, no, 15 gig of free space. Over here, Amazon Drive, I think we've been given for photos unlimited space, but typically um, you have, I think, five gig or maybe two gig from Amazon. And the Synology NAS here that we're accessing over the internet. Now we've got, not only have we got the same file access that we had before, but we can also access all manner of applications on our Synology NAS. Again, we've got Plex, we've got Moments, we've got all of those first and third party apps, as well as virtual machines and more. So we'll, we'll be going into this subject in greater detail and how NAS platforms compare with um, internet based third party clouds and how, you know, which one's right for you. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Put any notes you've got in the comments and I'll see you next time.